All right, for our audience at home, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your films and we'll get into the questions. All right, I'll start. <laughs> um, cool. My name is Lisa Belcher and I um, directed, produced, and I play the role of Jane in Havelina Run. It's a comedy Western. I'm Olivia Nash. I produced, directed, screenwriter, and acted in high H-I period. It's about two lovers and writers falling in love at a marina. You know, both of your films were like beautifully shot. So Olivia, tell us a little bit about your locations and the filmmaking process. Yeah, so let's we'll start with the location. So I actually found this location from one of my mom's friends. Um, she was really good friends with the manager at the marina and she brought me there and I just fell in love with this unique space. Um, I actually had written the story before I'd even seen this location. Um, and, and so it was just kind of this perfect moment where like you're there and you're like, this is it. This is the one that needs to be used. When you, you know, when you wrote the story and you finally found the location was there any difference in your mind and what you were seeing? Yes. Um, so I originally pictured this. It, this is a whole feature film that I've written. Uh, I originally pictured this more on like the uh, East Coast type of feeling. Uh, so it was it was different the way when you become a producer, you kind of have to adjust to the space that you're at and the area that you're at. Um, it, it, it in no way took away from the story and the people. And to be able to find this marina here when I was, it was a slight vision up there. And I, I'm not, I've never really gone to the East Coast that much. So it was more of like visualized from films that I've seen or things that I've seen online. Um, but it, it fit the feeling. And I think that's what matters. Lisa, tell us a little bit about your filming locations. I really love that as well. Sure, thanks. Um, we shot Havelina Run at the Pine Moor Old West Studios out in Blanco, Texas, which is about an hour out of Austin. And that was actually the first thing that we had on the journey. And so um, when I spoke with Aaron Hale, our writer, and said, hey, what do you think about a Western? Um, we had this location as an inspiration. So. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it's interesting to have a location, Olivia, you kind of say the opposite, but to, or to have a location in your brain. So I visualized sort of everything taking place there. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great spot and the people that run it are absolutely lovely. They have amazing props there as well. Um, it's called the, the buggy barn. Um, they have, you know, buggies and all sorts of props that have been used on a lot of different films around Texas. So Lisa, you know, how important was it to keep the film in Texas? Because you could have gone to Oklahoma. I know New Mexico has a lot of facilities now because of, you know, Epic and Netflix and everyone else filming out there. So how important to you was to keep the production here in Texas? Well, um, I'm based in Austin and my, I built kind of a great crew that we work with here. So our whole team was here and then finding that location close by. So it didn't really enter my mind to go elsewhere since we found that spot. So, um, so yeah, Texas was it. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the inspiration for your Western film. Um, so honestly, my um, uh, producing partner, like I said, found the, uh, the location for it. And then Aaron and I were working, we were writing another comedy. And so I suggested, you know, how about a Western? And so he came up with this idea. And when I read it, I was like, okay, this, um, we've got it, we've got to make this. And then um, some of my inspirations really came from one film, um, the uh, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which is the Coen Brothers film, which is a collection, you know, of, mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. shorts there. And so that was the idea to write or to, to film one of those. And then we're gonna, t we're now in the process of making the feature, yay. And so, um, or raising money rather. Um, and so we will tell um, five, additional stories that take place in Havelina County. We're going to follow new and diverse characters as they sort of weave their way through and interact with the previous characters that we've already met. And then the, um, the theme of it at the end is really that the ladies are the ones that are running Havelina County. And we're flipping that sort of all white male Western on its head. So that's that, the that is too for. cool and awesome. Olivia, that's, you know what I yeah. really liked about, I liked both of your films a lot, but 
Uh, Malivia, what I really liked about your cinematography was it kind of gave me the feel of, um, if you remember the Howard Hughes biopic, The Aviator with Leonardo DiCaprio. So tell us a little oh. bit about your colorization and the use of colors and then also to the use of close-ups, you know, that you had mm, with, with your characters yeah. on the boat and stuff. I mean, that, that's what, it reminded me of something from the 20s and 30s. So talk to me a little bit about that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's such a compliment. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the 20s and 30s are a huge inspiration for me. I actually write a lot of period pieces as well. Um, this is actually my one modern film that I went on. Uh, the colors too, thank you, it was so intentional. Um, I, I love color palette and I love bringing out the characters through color as well. Um, I think each Base, when you use color can tell such a strong story because the audience can pick up on that certain feeling without even noticing it. Uh, the Okay, so the shots. Um, yeah, I did a lot of close-ups because this is a real moment when these two characters are actually really uncomfortable. Um, they, they're getting to know each other and this is the first time they're actually opening up to each other. So I wanted to kind of keep in on them and create that intimacy, but also create that feeling of like, we barely know each other. Um, and that, that, that's what took place in that kind of process for keeping it close in on them. I mean, I, I could feel the vulnerability between the two characters on the way you did your close-ups and you know, you centered in the color. I mean, like I said, the color reminds me of the old Technicolor process. And it was just, just so warm, warm colors. And it really made the film. So Lisa, I got to ask, um, besides the Ballad of Buster Scrubs, what other Westerns um, influences you in, in, in this film? And, you know, I got to ask too, you know, it's a comic Western comedy and, you know, I'm 41. So I grew up in the Nickelodeon age and, I got a little of Hey Dude out of that. It was a TV show on Nickelodeon in the in the '90s, dealing with these kids that ran this uh, dude ranch out in Arizona. So, tell me a little bit more. Um, what films influence you? Um, that is funny. I'm gonna have to watch Hey Dude. I've never seen it. <laughs> um, so, honestly, um, before reading this, before going into production, I. I purposefully didn't watch a lot of Westerns, to be honest. I just kind of wanted to go go into it with kind of my own idea for the story. I mean, I will, um, I did watch The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And so we had a little inspiration of that, of the scene when he punches them and kind of the close-ups on the faces. So that was inspiration there. But um, really, uh, I, I took some from Wes Anderson as well, um, especially the music. Um, I just, uh, I love everything he does. And then some Coen brothers as well. So those oh, I two- I have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I was were, like Wes Anderson, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, we're kind of the inspiration going, going into it. Now, as we're going into the feature, a film that I'm super inspired by is um, My Name is Nobody, which um, Sergio Leone was, I think a writer here or a co-director. He wasn't all his film, but I really, I really love the tone of that one. Um, and then I watched um, Blazing Saddles, which I had not seen before we made this. And it's, um, it's not slapsticky like that. It's kind of, and it's not a traditional Western. It's kind of in the middle. So that's- You uh, have not seen Blazing Saddles before. What did you think when you saw that film? I mean, what was going through your mind? I actually liked it. I thought I was not going to dig it. I thought it was going to be too silly, but there were, um, there were just a, a lot of pieces about it that I- was inspired by and that I liked and you know the comedy is silly and it's 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 further pushed than where the comedy is for Havelina to run but um but I dug it I didn't I didn't think I was gonna like it that much but I but I did it was it's fun I love fun and silly <laughs> this next question is for both of you we'll start with Lisa Lisa what did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making your film um wow that's a big question okay so this was a, a, a fun journey doing Havelina Run because my previous films have all been dramas. Um, and the one right before that was kind of a heavy heartfelt drama. And so this, um, we, it checked off a lot of boxes for me as a filmmaker. Um, I hadn't done anything involving action. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the punch and the, the running scene and all of that was new, <clears throat> excuse me, and exciting. And I loved that and having guns on set that was something, you know, um, fun and interesting to bring to it as well. Completely different genre. 
Um, and then also the comedy. So I, I was a little scared going into it, to be honest. Um, I, and it's weird sitting in a theater knowing you have to listen for those laughs. Whereas my previous one, it's silent and I might hear a sniffle. So um, I was a little afraid to go into the comedy genre, but, uh, but I learned that I love it. So, <laughs> Olivia, what did you learn about yourself professionally and personally while making your film? Wow. Um, so starting off writing this screenplay, I actually wrote it during the pandemic as a slight way of therapy. There's certain things woven in into the story that I pulled from personal experience and kind of working those things out. Um, it really helped me in the way that it, it helped me grow as a person to let some things go. A lot of the theme that we're working through and even in this scene is about forgiveness of yourself. So the things that you did in the past and like moving forward. So this specific prod for the short, I would say it was, it was my first real experience directing. So professionally, I was able to get the crew together and producing, I guess. So get the crew together, um, learning how to manage that. I went to business school for management. So I got to kind of use those skills in the way of creating this team. So it was, it was a total growth process in that way. Um, directing wise, it showed me it showed me the way of like the process. So like the filmmaking process and like really focusing in on certain moments. I, I grew up acting. So that, that part I was very comfortable with. So going into directing, I was like, okay, I'm directing myself. So you're like picturing all the directors previously, their styles of directing and finding your own style of directing. And I think that would probably be my biggest, uh, biggest growth from that. If you don't mind me asking, if this is too personal, you know, please forgive me. Learning to forgive yourself, you know, a lot of us struggle with that. So how did you learn to forgive yourself? What was the process? Yeah, um, that, that's, that's such a fair question. I think that's a big topic that a lot of people need to be able to ask and it's okay to talk about. Um, the, the forgiveness process can take, you know, it's different for every single person. Um, I, I can be pretty hard on myself and no, most people are, uh, I, I did a lot of reflection, if that makes sense. Like I would sit back and I went through a lot of like blaming myself. Um, I, I would be like, you're an awful person, that type of blame. And then you go through and you're like, maybe you weren't, it was the situations that were presented in that moment and you reacted and you're like, that's not who I am. And so my forgiveness process was really discovering who I was while growing up and like finding those little moments and then kind of going, hey, you're not that person anymore and it's okay and you got to accept it and you can move forward. Awesome. Lastly, um, for the both of you, Olivia first and then Lisa, what are the websites and social handles for your film? Because we want to follow your, your journey um, because these are, two excellent short films and we want to see what else you guys can produce in the future and support you. Absolutely. So our website is www.hithemovie.com. And then our Instagram handle is at H I period the movie. Uh, definitely follow us on Instagram. We are, we are really getting that going and I'm excited to see who pops up on there and message us too. Like I'm totally down to clap, talk and whatever questions. <laughs> what about for you, Lisa? Where can we follow the short, but also to the making of your feature? Yeah, absolutely. Both of those will be on um, havelinarunmovie.com. Um, all information about the feature will be on there. Um, and then on uh, Facebook, it's just uh, Facebook slash havelinarunmovie. And then Instagram, same thing, Havelina Run Movie. So, um, so yeah, follow us there and we'll share all of the, the, the progress and everything and maybe people can get involved. Awesome. Thank you so very much to the both of you for taking out the time on your Saturday to chat with us. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Dad.